Hello and welcome to the weekly iteration. Today we're going to be talking about callbacks and how they can be used and abused in your Rails applications. Mostly abused. Mostly abused. And in fact, if you look at Ruby Science, uh, callbacks are listed as a code smell, which is interesting because look, it's an entire piece of active record functionality. It's just like smelly, dangerous. Watch out for it. So when are callbacks good and when are they bad? Uh, so I think, well, let, what's, what's good and bad about callbacks? So the, the good thing is it's a convenient way to add some persistence logic to your save method. It's a convenient way to, to decorate, to get into there, hook into the life cycle, and, and do some stuff related to persistence. So I think the biggest win is just that it's easy. It is easy. It is easy. That's kind of also the worst part, is that it's really easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and that because it's so convenient, I think it's very tempting to cram a bunch of stuff in there that doesn't really belong. Uh, and just to clarify, these, these callbacks we're talking about are like these like after save, before validation, after commit, things like that. Yep. Those hooks that you get with Active Record. Um, so the thing I, I and I, as I'm researching this episode, the Rails guides have no guidance as to what should go in a callback. They're like, here's all the kinds, here's how to use them, here are the ups and downs, but no like what what belongs there and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, I think there's actually a pretty simple rule for what you should put in a callback. Uh, ideally, almost nothing. But there's one, one good fit there, which is persistence logic. Mm -hmm. So to me, that there's basically, I, I thought of basically two things, which is like sanitizing input. So if there's, a, if there's something that you want to like strip out of some sort of user input before it goes in the database for some reason, that might be a good use for a callback. Okay. But arguably, maybe that's a validation. Maybe it happens at the form level. Maybe it happens elsewhere. Yeah, I think that's more of like a form object or controller thing. Really? OK. So, so you would, you'd say no sanitization in there? Yeah. OK. So scratch that. How about, how about like standardized formatting of input of some kind? Like you want a single format for how you store phone numbers? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like if you only want a single format, you would write a validation that ensures that things are in that format by the time they get to the model. Hmm. Then you would have something else sanitize them. OK. So what's an example of persistence logic that you actually would throw in a callback? So like one example might be if you have a cached value that you want to store alongside the normal value. Yep. So not like normalizing, but like if you calculate, I mean, this is sort of a contrived example, but you want to know the length of the title or something. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to calculate that every time. So you would store that as a column and then persist it. Or actually, a really common example, which is one provided by Rails, is a counter cache. Yep. Right? So it's not new data. You can derive that data from you know, the other things in the database. You could write a SQL query to do it. Mm -hmm. But it's frequently, it's, it can be faster, but it can also just be easier for things like, oh, I want to sort on how many comments there are. Mm -hmm. You can do that in SQL, but it's sort of a lot to write. Yeah. Or you can cache that. And I think that's a valid thing to put in a callback to say, like, OK, whenever one of these is created, update this column over here. Mm -hmm. OK. That's a pretty narrow scope. It is. There's not a lot there. No. Um, what shouldn't go in there is pretty much everything else. And the things that are super tempting are like, Business logic that you want to have happen before or after something has gone on with this object. Right. So like uh, what you just said, user sanitation, in input sanitation, is a really common example, mm -hmm. which I think is an abuse. OK. So um, that's a really easy one to put in there, right? Like it's easy. It goes along in the same like general time frame life cycle of like what you're doing. And it doesn't seem harmful. It won't even look bad in the code. Yeah. But it basically means that you've now tied this thing of like, OK, I sanitized this string to the life cycle of saving an object. So mm -hmm. it's no longer possible to perform one action without performing the other. Yep. And that's what's so dangerous about callbacks mm -hmm. is that it, first of all, traps that logic inside of the class, which its job is actually to save stuff. Mm -hmm. And it makes it so that you can't use it, like reuse it, test it, uh, yep. play with it in console without actually saving a record. Totally, yeah. So there's, so I've seen a lot of stuff that crept into here. Like um, I've worked on apps where when you save a purchase, uh, it charges the user and sends a receipt and you know updates the admin console and, and does a, a whole bunch of things like mm -hmm. this, uh, which, like you said, makes it hard to test things. It made it so that if I wanted to test, uh, do an integration test, I need to sort of build an unsaved purchase object that has a ton of associated data with it, and then save it and then make sure the right things fired. Uh, and it was quite a mess to work with, actually. Right, and it makes it really difficult to understand exactly what's going on. Like the learn code base used to work this way, and I think it's no There's longer. There's one or two examples base. I looked in there. 
But it, one of the things that drives me nuts about those kind of callbacks is that sometimes you'll be in a situation where you're like, oh, like I'm handling a customer support request. Somebody should be on this, but like there was a problem with Stripe, and we're just going to go into the console and fix it. Yeah. And so you pull out that you know, subscription or purchase record, and you say, like, ah, I want to toggle this flag, but there are callbacks. I know there are callbacks, and I don't want to inadvertently like charge this guy's credit card. Right. So if you keep that kind of stuff separate, like if you know setting a user's admin flag just sets the admin flag, that's good. If setting something else in the user, it's going to detect that it was changed and now upgrade their subscription status in mm -hmm. Stripe, that's really dangerous. Like you just poke one little attribute and go on your way and suddenly somebody sees uh, something on their credit card bill, that's... Yeah. That's no good. That escalates quickly. So this kind of gets back to the, the single responsibility principle. Is, mm -hmm. is kind of at the heart here. Like the acti all active record models have a responsibility of persisting. So everything you put in active record models are basically adding more responsibilities. But particularly when you jam them right in that save process, it's like even worse. Mm -hmm. It prevents you from just, just, just saving a record without worrying about all these implications, these side effects. Yep. I also think it gets this idea of behavior that should be layered on. So you should be able to get at the kernel of doing something, right? Like sending an email, for example. If you want to send an email, you should be able to just send the email. Mm -hmm. So if sending an email also charged somebody's credit card, like you had a mailer where it was like, OK, when you send the receipt, also bill them. Mm -hmm. It's still the same kind of thing, right? Like you could even do it in a callback. You could do it It's in the same kind of life cycle, but you'd be very confused. right? And I think it's the same thing with persistence. Persistence is its own thing. And not just in terms of like class responsibilities, but in terms of like these things, although they might tend to happen at the same time, are not the same action. Mm -hmm. So like build a bunch of small actions and then build one aggregate action for the common case. Yep. But like if you realize like, oh, somebody didn't get their receipt or they want another one, I should be able to just send it. Totally. Or if somebody wants to change their name without you know, changing their subscription plan, they should be able to do that. Yep. So I, I was trying to think of a couple signs that you're abusing callbacks. Um, one to me is definitely like when you want to skip them. Like inevitably, when you once you start using them, you quickly realize like, oh, but how do I do this without that? Mm -hmm. Like that that need comes up like so quickly, and that's a perfect sign of like you have collected these things together. You can't just do one without the other. Right. Uh, another is uh, I feel that a like after anything tends to be a little bit more suspect than before. Because at least with before, like maybe you're updating that counter cache, like you said, like you're doing something to get ready so we can save this thing in the database. Mm -hmm. Afters are, t t I think, are probably more likely to be coupled to outside things and, and doing extra work. Right. Yeah, that's probably true. I've used after callbacks more rarely. Mm -hmm. So another class of bugs we haven't even talked about is the the problem with side effects and transactions. So if you have callbacks that are performing side effects, you might have a transaction that ends up getting rolled back after it has performed some amount of side effects. Right. So the two examples we talked about already, like sending an email or charging somebody's credit card, mm -hmm. if you're doing that in a callback for a purchase, it doesn't unsend the email when it rolls back the transaction. Yep. So I have an example here uh, that actually shows off uh, that bug we were just discussing. Uh, so we have this survey inviter whose job is to deliver um, a bunch of invitations. And so we have a, a loop here uh, where we go through all the recipients, and for each one we create an invitation. And this, in fact, relies on the fact that when you create an invitation, it automatically gets delivered. Or you know, through the through the callback, uh, and this is vulnerable to that exact bug we talked about. So if uh, an, this invitation creation fails halfway through, let's say, um, and raises an exception, then we've sent half the emails. The rest are kind of like, uh, who knows? We sent some number of these based on you know which what fails where. Right. Assuming this is wrapped in a transaction. Uh, yes. So why don't we just take a minute and show how you would refactor this to to fix these issues? Well, let's let's actually wrap this in transaction just for. Uh, Clarity. Yeah. OK. So this at least, uh, so that this matches what we were talking about before. So let's let's get rid of the callback. So the first thing I'll do is pull this up to the top level, get rid of the, the callback, make it a public method. Uh, and now, uh, rather than uh, going through here and relying on each invitation uh, to just be delivered, uh, why don't we instead say, Create invitations, and then for on those we will deliver. And then we can just define that here. And now I think we've solved our problem. So yep. now we create all the invitations all at once, and we either create all of them or none of them. And then uh, once they're all created, we deliver on all of them. Or if something went wrong, we deliver on none of them. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and so we don't have this like halfway things are broken situation. Right. And I think it's really good in all of these situations where you interact with an external system and email is an external system mm -hmm. to think about what you want to do when it fails and how that will affect your like usual database heavy application. Mm -hmm. So uh, another example is with a decorator. So let's imagine we have these comments and uh, we want comments to post to a Facebook wall when they're created. Uh, this is an example from the Code Climate blog. Uh, one thing you could do here is you can add an after create, uh, but we're not going to do that. You know, after create, post to Facebook wall. Mm -hmm. That's like very tempting to just throw that on there and then write the method and then you know it works. Right. But it has all the problems we talked about. Uh, so what we can do instead is decorate a comment with that responsibility and make it so that when you save the comment, uh, it also gets posted to the Facebook wall. Uh, and so I'm using a simple delegator here. Uh, which is a simple way of uh, putting a comment in there, basically wrapping around it. We delegate all the methods that we don't define to that comment, uh, but it does let us override things. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can decorate here. Uh, I've done this like this. So now if we save, uh, we call save on the comment itself, uh, or if that saves, then we post to the wall. Uh, and here's an example of a used in a controller. Uh, we, we pass this, uh, the new comment, the unsaved comment, into the decorator itself. Uh, and then after that, everything that interacts with this comment doesn't know that it posts to Facebook. Uh, it just interacts with like a normal uh, active record object. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've added this, we've layered this on, like you said. We've, we've, we've given the people the ability to have a comment that posts to Facebook, but we have not coupled it uh, tightly to comment and make it so you always have to post to Facebook. Right. Um, and out of fairness to callbacks, I should say that the previous example where we worry about doing something in a transaction, there is actually a solution to that within the callback world, okay. which is the after commit callback. Mm -hmm. So it waits until the transaction is committed and then performs external side effects. Okay. But that's arguably even more confusing. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I'd rather see uh, one of these, I think. Right. Cool. Okay, I think that's it. Unless there's anything else you want to take one last crack at callbacks. Right. Yeah, I would say try it without a callback, and then if you really feel like it belongs in there, then move it into a callback. But don't start with callbacks. Got it. Reach for it as like a last resort. Yes. OK, awesome. As always, if you have questions, hit us up on the forum, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.